So welcome and good afternoon, everyone who have joined today, all these survivors. And I want to especially thank Dr. Minakshi Kadam that she have uh, agreed to give the very good insights about the aquatic therapies and other neuro rehab. So I welcome Dr. Minakshi for giving her time to all our survivors and caregivers on this rehab session today. So giving about the introduction about uh, Dr. Minakshi, she's a consultant neurophysiotherapist, an aquatic therapist, vestibular specialist. She has been uh, certified in various uh, workshops like vestibular rehabilitation for patients with vertigo, dizziness, and unsteadiness in United Kingdom. She is ATACP endorsed foundation course she have done in aquatic physiotherapy, and her experiences are in post-operative and rehabilitated care of brain, spinal, spinal cord, and nerve surgeries, geriatric patients with degenerative disorders, she have also treated pediatric patients, handling variety of cases like cerebral palsy, Down syndrome, CTV, and congenital syndromes, and many more. We are very much thankful, Dr. Minakshi, that you have come today. And uh, now I would like to hand over to you so that we can start with the session. And I would request to all the participants that if they have any questions, they can drop down in their chat section. And at the end of the session, Dr. Minakshi will definitely answer them. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon to all of you. Thank you for uh, that lovely introduction. Uh, I'm Dr. Minakshi. I'm currently practicing in a private clinic in Vashi, Navi, Mumbai. Uh, so I mainly treat uh, patients with uh, neurological conditions, including stroke. Uh, so today's topic, uh, we can just start the share, uh, share screening. Yes, as you all know that today's topic, we are going to talk about neuro rehabilitation, which is traditional neurotherapy and what is beyond it. So there are many adjuncts to uh, traditional physiotherapy, uh, which are coming up right now in India as well. And uh, we are going to talk briefly about it. Obviously, your uh, physiotherapist, your uh, occupational therapist, they will guide you better uh, seeing your uh, abilities and your conditional conditions uh, personally. So we are going to just uh, brief about uh, all the uh, adjuncts to neuro rehabilitation today. Uh, am I audible and the screen is visible as well? Yes, yes, ma'am. Very well. All right. Okay. So we will start with it now. Yes. Uh, all right. So for today's uh, uh, presentation, I would like to place the agenda also. So we are going to just look at the five objectives of neuro rehabilitation post stroke. So those are the main five objectives which you would like to achieve after uh, the stroke attack and into your neuro rehabilitation for a better recovery. Uh, we are also going to see uh, which are the other uh, branches uh, which are going to be helping you uh, achieve this. Uh, this post-stroke uh, recovery. So there is a multidisciplinary approach which should be followed. Uh, and then we are going to touch the newer approaches in stroke rehabilitation. Okay. Uh, if you have any uh, doubts, anything, any questions, please just put it in the chat box so we can discuss it after the session, please. Uh, so these are the five objectives which I would like to focus on uh, treating while treating each patient of uh, stroke. So first is most important that we want to achieve maximum level of independence while doing this. So during the stroke recovery, um, level of independence also is very much uh, important along with your level of confidence. So that is that goes hand in hand. So we want to uh, do rehabilitation activities in such a way that the patient is independent enough throughout the day to perform his day-to-day -day activities. Uh, secondly, uh, we want to focus on the facilitation of your neurological recovery. So uh, if you are performing any activity, if you are walking from A to B distance, the quality of the movement, the speed of the walking, the gait cycle, everything should be uh, very much, you know, uh, fine tuned and the quality should be good, especially. So we want to facilitate that during your recovery, not only just uh, make you independent. The third one is to minimize your disability. 
so for that today we are going to talk about the other approaches which we are going to uh, use along with our traditional therapy to help you achieve the uh, independent life uh, fourth and the most important again uh, to reintegrate you back into the home the family and the community especially so after stroke the patient loses a lot of confidence uh, to go back into the community to go back to their uh, original uh, you know job profile so that is something which we want to uh, focus on also when they are reintegrating back into it and the fifth objective of neuro rehab we focus on is to re establish of course a very meaningful and gratifying life which they were living before the uh, stroke episode so this is something uh, we want to focus on when we are treating a patient uh, after stroke um, okay so now the team approach which comes into picture when uh, you know a stroke settles in after you are uh, getting back to the house after medical uh, the hospital admission the neurologist treats you maybe you have undergone a neurosurgery also so after that in the rehab process physiotherapy occupational therapy speech therapy uh there is counseling as well to boost your confidence to uh, treat your uh, psychiatric uh, conditions as well depression so those are uh, totally different uh, you know uh, views also later on uh, nursing is also something which is very uh, important to make the patient feel uh, less dependent also so uh, on the family members which they are very uh, they feel very uh you know uh, less confident when they are uh, moving about in the house so nursing is also a part of the team uh, uh, during the neuro rehabilitation so these are uh, you all the patients must be uh, very much aware of uh, the traditional physiotherapy because they must be uh, engaged in the physiotherapy uh, uh, rehabilitation right now uh, during their uh, uh, you know uh, a uh, recovery period so strengthening and cardio exercises these are something uh, which are started from day 1 uh, in your uh, rehabilitation program so strengthening is something which uh, depends on the ability of the patient uh, like uh, whether they are going to use uh, weights or whether they are going to be uh, strengthening only with other approaches with the help of the physiotherapist uh cardio exercises these are going to improve your aerobic function as you all know the cardiovascular the aerobic function uh, is going to be improved with your uh, cardio exercises now these can be used with help of equipments or it can be used it can be done without equipments as well like just walking uh you can do step up and step down uh, if you have a, a small stepper at home or maybe in the uh, clinical setting so those are the activities which are uh, done in the cardio exercises uh second part uh, most important uh, balance and coordination activities to improve all these uh, we have a lot of equipments like the balance board uh, you have a gym ball which is seen in the picture over here also so uh, sitting on the ball uh, doing a lot of uh, balance and coordination activities with the help of your therapist to improve uh, the eye hand coordination as well so these are small small activities which are going to improve your balance and coordination uh, dr uh, dharam pande uh, i think he took a session last time on balance and coordination it was a wonderful session uh, then we uh, also have gait training during your uh, neuro rehabilitation your traditional physiotherapy so gait training to uh, help you achieve a lot of weight bearing uh, putting a lot of weight on the affected side the paralyzed side so that is going to give a lot of feedback so the therapist helps you to stand to achieve balance to achieve a good amount of gait uh, speed also during walking so these are the activities which uh, continue in your uh, clinical setting so in the hospital or the clinic or maybe in your home also if you are having a therapist visiting in your home these are the activities which are going on uh, in your traditional physiotherapy now what different we can uh, you know see uh, what newer approaches are available to help you attain the goal which you are uh, wanting to achieve so uh, we are going to look at those now we are going to look at the newer approaches today
Okay, so the newer approaches, obviously, these are not the ones which are going to be done only uh, aquatic therapy or only kinesiotherapy, so kinesio taping. So along with your traditional therapy, we are going to use these approaches to help you better to uh, achieve your goal. So you cannot say that I'll stop physiotherapy now. Now I'm going to just do kinase taping or only aquatic therapy and I'm going to get better with it. No, you cannot do that. So along with your traditional therapy, we have these approaches commonly used uh, nowadays over here in India as well. So we are going to look at those one by one. So we have aquatic therapy, which is hydrotherapy or water-based therapy. So basically these are uh, exercises which are going to be done in water, in a pool. So that is there. Uh, kinesio taping is there, virtual reality, treadmill training. Uh, then we are going to also look at uh, mirror therapy. And uh, one more is uh, CIMT, which is constraint induced movement therapy. So I will be explaining everything in detail, like uh, what all is, uh, you know, uh, what all equipments, what all instruments are there uh, and how was it carried on. So basics we are going to talk about today of each therapy. Okay, so starting with aquatic therapy. So what is aquatic therapy? Uh, it is basically a physiotherapy program. Okay. And it is done by a very much uh, trained aquatic therapist. So there is a different type of training for a physiotherapist. Uh, you know, they can uh, get themselves certified with uh, aquatic therapy. And they are going to customize and they are going to give you a tailored program, a physiotherapy program for each individual differently. Uh, it is going to utilize the properties of water. So as you all know that whenever you go inside a pool, uh, you can float, you can just uh, feel very light. So because of water, there is buoyancy effect. And because of that, it is very easy for the patients with stroke, especially with stroke, when they are not able to do particular activities in uh, on land in the clinical setting, they are able to do it with lesser uh, support or with maximum independence inside the pool, in the water. So this is a physiotherapy program which uh, is specific for an individual and it maximizes your function inside the water. And uh, research is uh, uh, very much uh, done in this uh, arena and uh, it is also proven to be very effective in stroke patients uh, wherein after the therapy in water, after aquatic therapy sessions, the patients were able to do much better on land as well. So this is something, uh, you know, it is upcoming in India as well now, uh, but the treatment should be carried out in a heated pool. As you all know that warm water is going to cause a lot of muscle relaxation for the patients. Uh, it is going to help uh, with the spasticity and the patients are going to get relaxed in that. Uh, so warm water, the heated pool, 35 degrees Celsius heated pool is what is recommended for uh, aquatic therapy. And uh, this program is totally goal oriented. So it is not going to be uh, like, you know, uh, do these activities for 10 times, do this for uh, 20 times. No, it is going to be goal oriented. So if you have difficulty in walking on land and that is the goal you want to achieve uh, to improve your independence, that is what you're going to do in the water. So in the water, you're going to focus on activities which are going to improve your walking. So your speed is going to improve. Uh, your step length is going to increase and uh, there is no fear of fall in the water. So the patients who have fear of fall on land, it becomes very easier for them to uh, train inside the pool so that, you know, their confidence also increases that, uh, you know, whatever happens, I'm not going to fall down. And even if I fall down, I'm not going to get hurt. So that is the biggest motivation for them to uh, you know, practice this uh, uh, walking or maybe other whatever activities which are going to be conducted inside the pool. So that is the biggest motivation for them. Uh, yes. So we are going to see how hydrotherapy or aquatic therapy helps in stroke patients. So basically it is going to improve your mobility. So the range of motion of your muscles uh, of your joints, sorry, uh, it is going to increase. So whenever you're not able to perform any movement, uh, complete movement, water is going to help you relax those muscles and to improve your range of motion. It is going to increase your strength as well. 
so not just that the water helps to relax it also provides a lot of resistance when you're acting against buoyancy effect so like on land whenever you're performing your exercises as you all know you're uh, using weights uh, you're using the gym equipments or maybe uh, on uh, the in the clinical setting as well you're using uh, against gravity so you're doing any movement against gravity similarly in water you can do against buoyancy to improve your strength so there are a lot of equipments available inside the water as well to improve your strength there is a uh, pain relief so this is also biggest factor of water that pain relief is uh, you know that is the most important uh, way in which uh, stroke patients are helped so shoulder uh, pain is very common in uh, stroke patients so that is also something which uh, is uh, taken care of cardiovascular health by doing aerobic uh, activities inside the water for balance training uh, com- continuously in the water uh, you uh, you feel that you are moving or uh, you know you feel the uh, water continuously uh, giving a lot of feedback to your body so you need to stand or uh, do those activities in a position in which you are balanced so you need to activate your core muscles continuously for your balance uh, training over there so that is something which is uh, very much helpful for the stroke patients uh, now next is muscle relaxation as i told you that muscle relaxation is something which happens in a heated pool uh, more over in the water so now uh, these are the aquatic exercises so now i'm not going to touch down on various approaches in uh, aquatic therapy that your aquatic therapist or your physiotherapist uh, will be performing on you so you won't be able to do it on your own but these are the aquatic exercises which uh, further i'm going to talk about those you can do on your own but all, uh, obviously under supervision uh, so these won't require any approaches as such to uh, perform so these are some aquatic exercises which you can do without the use of equipment so in the first picture as you can see the person is floating in the water so that is just causing a lot of relaxation uh, uh, there is uh, you know there is uh, uh, also balance uh, is something which uh, the patient is getting a continuous feedback from the water that he has to balance his body in this position so that is something uh, which is very uh, useful for the stroke patients in the second uh, clip you can see the person is doing a step up and step down uh, provided in the steps uh, in the pool as well so that is also something uh, which is uh, very difficult for patients with stroke on land so this is inside the water inside the pool wherein you are just immersed up to your chest level so uh, there are bars also available uh, on the side walls so we can uh, take help of that or the patient if he is independent enough to perform it without uh, you know fear uh, then without that also the patient is able to do the uh, the step up and down uh, if the steps are not available we have uh, special stools also uh, which can be immersed in the water and uh, stepping up and down activities are done uh, the third uh, clip over here it shows uh, a person uh, performing ac- uh, exercises inside the water without any equipment and just performing cardio uh exercises to improve your uh, uh, you know aerobic conditioning to perform uh, cardio exercises here so just uh, i'll go back again sorry yes yeah, so just uh, stepping ahead stepping forward stepping back and uh, jumping activities so those are some activities which can be done without equipment now these are some examples of pool equipment which we have so in the first picture you can see there is a pool noodle uh we have uh, just like dumbbells which we have in our gym uh, these are the uh, dumbbells which are used in water inside water and these are made up of foam everything is made up of foam so that you know it floats in the water so it can help you to perform any activity or also you can use that to increase your uh, resistance so increase resistance and increase the strength like this so if you are pushing the uh, dumbbells or the noodle inside the water you are getting a lot of resistance with that 
so that is used for strengthening activities uh, second year we have a kick board so you can just hold that board it floats on water many of you must have seen this while uh, you know going for your first swimming class so this is something which uh, you can just hold in your hand and walk in the water so aqua walking is also something which helps for the uh, patients with stroke you know uh, they are not easily fatigued and they don't require a lot of support while walking these are gloves in the third picture which we are seeing which provide resistance while uh, performing any kind of uh, hand activities so these are all the loose equipments which are available which you can just uh, you know portable equipments now this th fourth picture over here uh, it shows a treadmill and it is there is one aqua cycle over here placed here so cycling and walking on the treadmill uh, is also possible inside the water so these are fixed equipments and uh, these can be used again to improve your uh, cardiovascular function your gait is improved in this uh, as you have a lot of uh, resistance also coming from the water uh, that is also very helpful to improve your strength uh, if this kind of setup is uh, not available if there is uh, uh, no pool uh, around uh, you know in your vicinity uh they have come up with uh, aquatic uh, sorry treadmill pods as well now so this is something which is new uh, you just go inside from this door and you lock the door behind uh once you step inside uh, the sensor catches that uh, you know that you're stepping on the treadmill and it starts filling the water up to your uh, waist or chest level whatever however the height is adjusted inside already there is again warm water is there inside and the treadmill starts working so you just adjust the speed and the resistance etc you just stand this is very good for uh, you know repetitive movement treadmill training repetitive movement of the legs to improve your uh, gait cycle so this is also something which is new which has come up and uh, many of the uh, settings are cl clinical or hospitals are setting up with this kind of uh, uh, setup now so now hydrotherapy using equipment so again we saw the loose equipment so this is again a pool noodle uh, which is used under the uh, uh, this thing back uh, so that the patient is supported while floating and they are performing leg and uh, hand movements in this uh, this person is pushing the noodle down for improving his tricep strength. Uh, this person is using bar, uh, the barbells or the dumbbells, which we call, and they're just doing this pushing activity, the punching or boxing activity. Uh, that inside the water becomes very difficult. These seem very easy right now, but performing that inside water is uh, pretty difficult and it requires a lot of strength also. And your core muscles are also activated very nicely in this. Uh, this person is again uh, pushing the noodle down, getting it up. This person again pushing the noodle, uh, you know, uh, sideways. So abduction, adduction activities are again done inside this. Uh, this is a picture wherein the therapist is helping the patient, you know, along with all the uh, uh, equipments put placed inside, uh, just uh, below the patient. And the therapist is helping the patient to perform uh, trunk rotations or just adjusting the uh, you know allowing the patient to adjust himself to the uh, uh, the water so balancing activities also uh, performed in this these are just short clips uh, which i could just uh, show you now ending the aquatic session uh, i usually uh, go for a simple floating exercise uh, so after the heavy uh, exercise and heavy workout inside the water, uh, simply floating using a pool noodle, you can see a pool noodle is placed under the patient's waist so that the patient is, uh, you know, uh, comfortable and can easily relax inside the water. So a patient with uh, right-sided uh, uh, paralysis was, uh, you know, uh, doing the simple floating activity at the end of the session to just pull down. Uh, with all the just like uh, in the gym also or uh, throughout our therapy also uh, there is warm up there is exercise and there is cool down so this is the cool down process which i prefer for the patient just before they get out of the pool so this is something very relaxing for the patient and uh, they are also tired at the end of the session all right so that was all about aquatic therapy uh, now we uh, proceed further to kinesio taping so as you can see in this picture over here, the blue tape which is seen here, this is a kinesio tape. It is a specialized elastic tape. Now this is something which is used to, uh, you know, uh, increase uh, the 
sorry to facilitate your muscle the muscle function if the particular movement is not possible by the patient for example wrist extension is not possible this movement is not possible continuously the patient is in this uh, grip uh, he will not be able to perform very efficient activities in this position so we want to achieve uh, we want to help the uh, extensors to go into neutral position so we are using kinesity to uh, achieve this uh, you know to at least provide a feedback to the patient uh, by applying this tape so this is a, a elastic tape which can be stretched also so basically uh, it will give you a lot of feedback uh, you know ki uh, patient uh, matlab tape lagaya hai yahan pe uh, continuously you are looking at it the brain is also getting a good feedback the visual feedback is there there is also tactile feedback so something is there on my hand and i need to keep this position maintain i need to try to get to this position at least so that feedback is something which is going to give you good alignment which is very much essential for all your functional activities so you are not going to be able to perform anything you are not going to be able to pick up anything in this position efficiently as much as you are going to be able to pick up in this position with a good grasp so this supports the joint structure as well so uh, this is also something used as an adjunct uh, to your traditional physiotherapy uh, some of the applications i would like to uh, mention uh, in the first first picture i think someone has scribbled on the screen so maybe you won't be able to see it clearly but uh, in the first picture uh, uh, shoulder subluxation is something very common in, uh, after stroke so because of the weakness Uh, so to support that joint the the ball and socket joint over here we are applying this tape in a vertical horizontal and a y shaped manner so there are many techniques available uh, for particular you know specific for that condition so here they have used a y shaped technique there is a vertical tape so that the joint uh, is not you know getting pulled down due to gravity so that is going to again uh cause a lot of weakness and continuous pull of the gravity on your muscles also it is going to cause a lot of pain and weakness also so this is something which is used to uh, support the structure you know your muscles are getting supported you will be able to perform better activities with this uh then the second picture it shows if you can appreciate the skin color tone of the kinesio tape over here uh, it is placed on the uh wrist extensors over here so it is cut into small strips and it is connected till the wrist extensor uh over here till the wrist it is crossing the wrist joint so this is something which again as i uh, mentioned earlier in the example uh, the patient is able to grasp this properly the objects are being grasped properly uh, because the tape is continuously pulling it into extension like this so they are able to hold the object properly they are able to uh you know get that feedback also that something is supporting my structures i need to also uh give extra efforts now and pick it up and then release the object as well so that is something which kinesio tape will help you in uh the third thing is uh the third picture it shows uh the kinesio tape is you know uh, placed on your foot from the foot up to the shin of the uh leg so this is something which can be used in patients who have a uh, difficulty in doing dorsiflexion to get the toes up to get the foot up so foot drop is something uh everyone must be aware here about uh like uh, they are not able to perform this movement getting the foot up so we are just applying the tape from the toe and up to the and we are just pulling it up stretching it up up to the leg so that is something again it is going to help you uh, improve your gait speed uh, you are able to uh, place your uh, foot down during the gait cycle with your uh, heel down and then with your toes down so this is also a good application of kinesio taping again just remember that this is an adjunct to your traditional therapy so sirf itna lagaya aur mera kaam ho gaya aise nahi hone wala you have to obviously after application of this you are going to be uh, joining with your uh, therapist for your traditional therapy as well so this is just to help you uh, overcome some amount of difficulty while performing the uh, movements so this was about kinesio taping now we move on to virtual reality reality training 
so this is something uh, which is just using your computer and gaming technology you must be aware that uh, few people have uh, tv screens at home with a lot of video games that kids are playing video games on it so it is uh, similar to that only difference is that uh, we have a sensor in this wherein the patient is uh, just standing or sitting in front of the screen and uh, the games are played so for example football is there tennis is there or just walking uh, on a path is there so a virtual environment is created on the screen and uh, when the sensor is detecting you you just have to perform that particular movement so for example in the first picture here you are seeing a therapist is helping the patient stand and the game i think it is a football game uh, getting played over here so uh, the there is a ball here whenever the uh, screen it shows that you are ready to kick the ball inside the uh, to perform the goal so the patient is doing uh, hip flexion and then he's trying to kick the ball so this allows uh, improving your uh, uh, balance your coordination you just have to have a good reaction time as well that whenever something is uh, playing on the screen you have to concentrate and just uh, perform the uh, movement immediately after that so your reaction time is also something which is uh, getting trained over here balance is very important in this activity in standing here uh, the second picture here it is a patient who is on a treadmill and he is supported on the treadmill and there is uh, as you can see there is a pathway in a jungle so he is getting a uh, feedback that he is walking in a jungle so he keeps on walking doing the treadmill activity instead of just doing repetitive uh tre treadmill training uh, this is something which is uh, you know the patient feels like he's walking in a jungle so that gives a good uh, motivation for the patient to continue the training uh it also uh, the patients also receive an immediate feedback on their performance uh, like uh, if he misses out a ball while kicking he will get a immediate feedback that i was wrong i couldn't perform this movement because i uh was lacking in something so that is a feedback immediate feedback that they get on the performance so this uh, training also provides task oriented practice so there is a task which is happening there uh, like playing the uh, like kicking the football so that is a task and then the patient is performing it so it is not just uh, lying down in your bed and doing 10 repetitions of this 20 repetitions of this activity is a task which is uh, getting you know practiced so there is a lot of repetition which can happen in this uh, it is a fun activity as well for the patients to boost their uh, motivation while performing it and also controlled environment is there so it is safe for the patients as well since uh, you know you can just you cannot take your therapist to a football ground and perform this activity if you are a football player earlier before stroke and you want to continue resume that you cannot take your therapist to the football court and do this Uh, in the initial days obviously so a safe and controlled environment is something which is uh, provided by virtual reality thing okay so uh, this is about uh, virtual reality training now we go on for treadmill training so uh, now treadmill training is something which is providing you a lot of repetition of the same movement continuously so if you are walking on the treadmill for 10 to 15 minutes uh you are in a controlled environment you are in a safe environment uh there is no fear of fall because uh, you are going to be continuously around uh the therapist and no different environment is going to be introduced like on the road while walking on the road the cars are coming and going someone is coming in between so you have to change your path in the treadmill it is just a continuous and repetitive uh movement which is happening and in a controlled uh, you know environment so it allows complete uh, it allows the practice of complete gait cycle and it also obviously increases your aerobic capacity your endurance your lung function it also allows you to increase or decrease the speed uh, according to abilities so uh, in the treadmill uh, there are obviously settings to increase your speed increase the resistance as well uh, according to your strength and your uh, lung function uh, and the fourth most important thing about treadmill is that it allows reduced manual efforts so manual efforts are what uh, there are three or four people around which are helping you to uh, you know uh, walk on the road uh, you are uh, being held by uh, someone you are using a walker you are using a stick so treadmill training is something which uh, allows lot of uh, reduction in a manual effort so here you as you can see 
and there is hardly one person with you uh, maximum two people can be there uh, to help you uh, you know uh, improve your the fine tuning of the movement uh, to improve the quality of your movement two people can be around you the therapist who can help you to perform the walking pattern to improve the walking pattern so in the treadmill a harness is provided like this and uh, uh, you know the body weight 10 to 40% of your body weight is taken by this harness so there is erect posture of your uh, patient you know the head and the trunk is an erect uh, posture that allows for a lesser weight on your lower limbs on your legs both the legs so that allows you to uh, balance well as well you can uh, perform the uh, gait movement the walking movement for a longer time so that you are not getting fatigued also because the weight is getting pulled up by the treadmill so this is something which is uh, uh, getting very common in our uh, therapy centers nowadays that uh, body supported treadmill training this is what we call it so there can be complete body support wherein the patient is not able to perform anything on his own but we want to achieve erect posture and start the walking as soon as possible for maximum uh, uh, you know uh, results to good, achieve good results and there is something called as uh, like this one partial uh, partial uh, body weight supported uh, treadmill training in which uh, there is only some amount of weight which is taken by the machine and otherwise you have to uh, uh, control your body weight and you have to walk uh, accordingly so this is something which is upcoming now uh, you can discuss with your therapist for uh, these options uh, yes so we move on to mirror therapy uh, mirror therapy is a uh, you know specialized therapy which was earlier used uh, for different conditions but now we are also uh, getting good results in stroke patients wherein there is neglect so the uh, patient is unaware of the uh, paralyzed side uh, that uh, this hand exists and I will be able to perform any movement with this hand so that is something which is getting trained in this therapy so basically we use a mirror over here in between in the center of your body like this there is a, a box or maybe just a covered something which is kept behind this side on the mirror so for example in this first picture if you see the left hand is affected uh, is paralyzed it is kept inside the box nothing else is done it is just kept inside the box up away from the vision of the patient and the right hand which is a good hand is holding a ball and the patient is given the uh, activity of uh, squeezing this on the ball so this is the movement which the patient which the patient is performing now the patient can see this movement in this mirror over here and he feels or maybe uh, it is just a movement, uh, it is just an illusion for the patient uh, which we are trying to do to create an illusion that we are tricking the brain into thinking that, oh, uh, my left hand is performing this movement because I can see in the mirror, my left hand is behind, but then my left hand is performing this movement because I can see that in the mirror. So we are just tricking the brain into thinking like this. So now oh, only this helps to create a very positive visual feedback. So the, continuously he is performing the movement with his good hand or the good leg uh, in the second picture. As you can see, the lower limb is placed like this. So they feel that uh, my other side is, uh, uh, you know, moving as well. My other side is also uh, performing that kind of movement. Now this creates a lot of uh, positive feedback on the brain. And uh, the mirror neurons which are present in your brain, they are the ones which are getting activated when you imagine like this. When you imagine like this, that your unaffected, uh, sorry, the affected side is getting uh, trained as well. So this is uh, the principle of mirror therapy. Uh, this uh, mirror therapy can be done for any kind of activities, especially done for hand activities and uh, to train your lower limb as well in the sitting or uh, as you can see long sitting position over here for dorsiflexion especially. So this is uh, a new you know, uh, therapy which is uh, upcoming and which is used along with the traditional ones. Uh, so we move on to constraint-induced uh, movement therapy, CIMT as we commonly call it. So CIMT is what? Constraint is basically your uh, good hand. So for example, if my left hand is good and my right hand is paralyzed, so my left hand is going to be covered in a maybe or in a plaster 
or i can uh, get a sling also for my good hand so just remember the good hand is kept mobilized it is restrained for doing uh, restrained from doing any kind of activities throughout the day at least for 90% of waking hours it is done that so uh, your affected hand your paralyzed hand is forced compulsory it is forced that uh, it has to be used in your day to day life situations you, it is used for problem solving so uh, you usually tend to use your uh, good hand for uh, performing activities which are difficult throughout the day in the house as well so for to avoid that to emphasize on repetitive training of your affected side your paralyzed side we are using uh, cimt so in that uh, as we can uh, as i told you right now uh, a glove can be used a plaster cast is there uh, you can see in this uh, picture the uh, the child is having a cast uh, on the uh, non affected side they put a cast on the non affected side and the paralyzed hand is forced to use uh, the uh, Uh, the hand to perform this uh, activity so uh, this is something which uh, emphasizes on a lot of intensive uh, training so throughout the day at least for 5 to 6 hours uh, can go up to 8 to 9 hours in intensive training uh, this type of therapy can cause a lot of frustration for the patients so it should be done at a very slow pace initially and then gradually Uh, improved and uh, we usually tend to uh, perform this therapy for at least two weeks. So every day uh, we are doing this for five to six hours, and we go on for at least two weeks of intensive program. Uh, so this is about uh, CIMT, and uh, uh, this is going to help you to use the uh, limb, the affected limb, uh, more than the non-affected limb. Yes, so. coming to the end of the session uh, these were the newer approaches commonly used and uh, yes apart from the traditional therapy so coming to the session i thank you all for uh, patiently listening to this uh, presentation if you have any doubts you can please uh, go on uh, thank you so much dr minakshi for giving us such a uh, good session and given just explaining about the new therapies that actually many of our survivors uh, won't uh, were not aware about for example the aquatic therapies and the other yeah. virtual therapies and i think these therapies in india uh, if i'm not wrong the penetration is very less so what are your very less yes what are your suggestions that our survivors uh, can you know uh do it at like any exercises that can be done at home because i think one of the questions that i have seen in the chat box is that uh, is it possible to achieve these without a pool perhaps using a tub or a bucket focusing on a specific part such as leg or arm uh so i would suggest that uh, you get a whole experience of immersion of yourself in the pool which is going to be anyways much better uh but considering the covid situation right now the pools are uh, like access to the pools is a problem so what we do for uh, uh, you know our patients in the clinic as well uh, we use a big tub of water and uh, uh, preferably we try to take uh, heated water so uh, warm water and then for the hand or the foot activities we try to uh, give activities inside that tub so just picking up uh, we keep some toys or maybe some small small uh, equipments available so we just put that inside the water uh, which is floating so foam uh foam material is something which i would advise to all the patients that they use foam material uh, so that it floats on the water and it is easier to pick up from the water as well it is lightweight so uh that is something which i could suggest uh that using a tub or a bucket and put the uh, things in the water and try to pick it up with your hand uh, immersed in the water so uh this is uh, something which i would uh, like to suggest to the patients but again i my suggestion would be to use a pool uh, always because uh, that is a whole experience which you get just now you will uh, get only experience with your hand or your foot but immersing yourself inside the water that is going to cause a deeper effect on your body and your brain as well thank you so much ma'am and also there is i think one uh, person who is raising his hand arjun i am uh, unmuting you uh, you can unmute yourself and ask your question
or you can just type in in your uh, chat box if you want any questions. Uh, so before he unmutes, I would ask one more question uh, that uh, there is one person who is asking that mirror therapy is, uh, is it possible for the trunk as well? Uh, it is very difficult when you are uh, involving your trunk in this. Uh, since uh, in the mirror, uh, like in the trunk, sorry, uh, you cannot uh, divide the two uh, portions into two halves, right? So that is something which is difficult to perform uh, in front of the like mirror. Uh, because what happens in mirror therapy, you have to uh, understand one thing that you are keeping the uh, affected side closed compulsory it has to be covered so that is something which is uh, going to help so the trunk you cannot keep it covered uh, since it is just one unit uh, so that is what uh, uh, my answer would be so it is not possible for the trunk activities uh, for the leg and for the hand it is very much uh, efficient and possible so because you can cover it with a box or maybe uh, something else and then keep the mirror in between the two uh, you know the limbs but uh, uh, otherwise for the trunk it is not possible feasible also yeah arjun you can ask your question we have unmuted you i already asked the question in oh, the he chat has box. typed in the chat box yes okay. does cycling add more stiffness in calf or hamstring muscles so cycling is something uh, so it depends on your tone. Uh, the tone needs to be assessed by your physiotherapist first. Uh, what is the level of stiffness in your hamstrings and your calf muscles? And how it is affecting your, uh, you know, uh, the progression. So after the cycling session, how it is. So it is better for uh, a physiotherapist to, uh, you know, assess you before and after the cycling session for you per se uh, as a customized thing. So cycling uh, does naturally add slight amount of uh, stiffness in the muscles, but it is not going to cause any harm to you. So you should be able to place it properly on the pedal. The legs should be placed properly on the pedal. It should not be, uh, you know, fixated by someone. So, uh, you know, it should not be uh, tied around uh, by a person, uh, by straps or something like that. Okay, so it will I'm not be asking about, to... about stationary cycling, basically. I'm asking about the cycle which we go for workouts, okay? Exercise bicycle, okay? Not the stationary. Okay, stationary one. cycle, you're saying? No, no, not, not stationary, okay? Uh, the one which we use on the road? Yeah, 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 right. Okay, so it depends on your activity again, like uh, your independence also, uh, how you're able to perform the uh, movement uh, on the road without any uh, falling down also you are able to place it properly or not because if you are not able to do that your muscles are go uh, are going to go into a lot of stiffness to control that movement okay yes so that is something uh, thank you, you thank you so much yes thank yes. you welcome yeah. very, very nice session thank you Mitamana ji thank you so much thank, thank you me. madam Minakshi ma'am thank you for reply Yes, thank you. And uh, one question is that uh, I want to ask that how much does smoking affect one's chance to get a stroke? Yes, smoking is a very big uh, risk factor uh, associated in stroke. Uh, so yes, uh, stroke, uh, smoking for a long period of time, that is going to affect your lung capacity. It is going to affect your oxygen supply to the brain. Uh, that also increases a lot of uh, risk uh, to get a stroke. In young uh, age also, it affects a lot. So yes, it does affect, yes. There is one question that uh, one of the person's affected side pains a lot. What can be the solutions uh, to reduce pain or any kind of intervention through rehab? Uh, so pain is something which should be assessed by your uh, therapist or taken an opinion from your neurologist as well uh, as to where is the exact cause of pain, uh, like what is the exact cause of pain, the site of pain and uh, is it continuously paining or uh, it is, uh, you know, just paining after any particular kind of activity. So a lot of factors are going to get involved when you assess this uh, type of pain and a lot of uh, interventions are available to uh, you know reduce the pain 
सो यू कैन जस्ट गो थ्रू दोज ऑल्सो देर इज अ टेंस मशीन विच वी यूजली यूज फॉर पेन रिलीफ Uh, that is available then kinesi taping helps uh, also to relieve the pain and keep the joint supported uh, that is also something you can try out for thank you so much ma'am and uh, i think uh, one question is that uh, from my side that a question okay. that you have uh, taught about new new uh, new therapies so right. these uh, virtual uh, uh, that exercise that you have told the gaming one can this be Correct, yes. uh, is this available in most of the centers or we have to go at a particular center that is available how penetration uh, how much penetration is there because i think many of the young stroke survivors who have got stroke they must be involved right. in this gaming parts and they must Correct. find this full to get into this so what is the, what are your views that is this is there any penetration of these kind of uh, rehab exercise in our india uh so currently uh, we have a few centers in mumbai in pune as well uh, i'm not aware about uh, the centers apart from those uh, in other cities but most of the cities they have like the metropolitan cities at least they have centers which uh, are you know they have started with uh, virtual reality training now so they can be started with a simple uh, tool as well uh, not necessary to get the com- uh, the whole uh, computerized system uh some of the centers have that as well so you can just find out in your uh, nearby you know in your vicinity whether uh, they have uh, virtual reality training available there but mostly when the center has uh, sports related rehabilitation or neuro rehabilitation uh, just check out for the uh, uh, this thing uh, centers which uh, are giving you uh, this kind of therapy so mostly sports and neuro rehabilitation is something which uh, centers are something uh, which i feel that they have these facilities so vr goggles are something uh, which are cheaper on the cheaper side uh, so those are uh, commonly used by uh, physiotherapy clinics uh, but the whole computerized system you you will get it at a very high end facility or in a hospital setting maybe Wow. I think there is some problem with uh, the Manas network. Yeah, actually, I was uh, unable to unmute, and there is a power cut on my side. Okay, so, okay, I thought so. Yes, thank I you. I hope so you got much. the answer. I think. Yes, 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 ma'am. Yeah. Thank you so much, ma'am, uh, for your time. And I think these therapies that you have actually told, they would actually uh, go towards an approach towards the newer therapies, all our stroke survivors and caregivers. And I would actually request stroke survivors and caregivers to, if you have any questions, you can just connect with Dr. Minakshi uh, by typing Thank in your you. questions uh, in the uh, in our group, and that will be great. and thank you so much dr minakshi for today's session i think it was very informative even i was not knowing about these newer therapies that you actually told today about and that's so um, i mean uh, helpful for the stroke patient especially the aquatic therapy okay. that you explained so well yeah. that it's very yeah. difficult for a person to uh, you know perform such activities uh, on land but in water it actually provide you that right. comfortability and ease to go with that exercise so Correct, once again yes. very thank you ma'am and i would also like to thank all our survivors and caregivers for patiently listening to dr minakshi and for the session thank you so much ma'am thank you we look forward for thank such thank you very much for this opportunity yes uh, people who want to uh, reach out for any other doubts uh, etc they can definitely reach out in the group as you said yes mm-hmm. Yes, yes, ma'am. We would definitely. Thank you so much, ma'am. All Thank right. you. Yes. Thank you.